Hey guys, Tom with Permaculture Wilmington here. Just wanted to show you my clover. Um, this is crimson clover in the back and it's absolutely magnificent the way it's been growing and, and it's attracted so many bees. It's been wonderful. Um, but the way we planted it, we planted it right at the bottom of our little hill here. Um, and this was all grass where you see the clover growing now. So clover in the back and then wheat straw and clover in the front. And all this was grass like it is right here. Um, just last last fall and this winter I came out and laid down some cardboard here and then put um, some wheat straw over the top and uh, I mean the the structure of this soil now is just amazing and that the moisture concentration and, and how it's retaining moisture and holding form I mean this is outstanding soil it's almost like worm castings you know and just last uh, last fall that was that was not the case. That was sand. I mean, you could just pull the grass out and pull up a big handful of sand and it would run right through your fingers. It was so dry. It was horrible. So um, I, I didn't want to just go ahead and plant in it. I decided to go ahead and add, um, you know, a regenerative planting method with clover and then mycelium. And then I put the clover in front. But this system has worked out better than I expected because as this clover here, this clover is going to, it's, it's already fallen over, you can see. So it fell over because of the weight of the, all the, the um, the flowers that are on there and uh, it's going to drop seeds onto the onto this the wheat straw here so the wheat straw is basically acting like a scatter mulch um, so that the seeds are going to germinate and the straw is going to hold moisture and the the straw is going to hold moisture for the seed while it's trying to root so it won't dry it out so we'll have a great germination right here and a great seedling rate and they're going to come up and once these plants are growing i've got some potatoes and some some uh, shallots in here uh, these are, are hopefully going to be flowering. They're, they're not far from it now. But uh, then once these start flowering, then we can start um, planting stuff in the back back here. Uh, getting, you know, taking this clover out and uh, it'll probably be dry by then anyway. But then we can just plant stuff right along where the roots are. So we can use that area because we've been using the clover for regenerative plant practices, right? So um, if, we, if we plant right where the roots are, that should be the most aerated soil because that's what clover is known for is being a nitrogen fixer and uh, loosening the soil on the top six inches. Back is, is crimson clover in the back for pollinators and then I switched over to red clover because I wanted it to be edible. Um, and if you see the chevrons on them like this, uh, see there's this little white chevron. Uh, on the leaf and that signifies that it's a edible clover so all the edible clovers have that chevron on them so i thought that was pretty cool when i learned that because it makes it a lot easier to just walk around and eat clover whenever you want to this is a, a great way uh to to plant regeneratively and not have to worry about using tillers and tilling up your soil and killing your mycelium um this is this is the way we need to be doing it guys and then we just plant right into it is it with you know disturbing the soil as little as possible very important but i wanted to show you how this setup works because you know as the the clover falls and seeds you know this is going to come up and then this is going to fall forward as it flowers and it's going to seed here and then we can have a whole nother row back here we can plant some things polyculture style mix it up a little bit don't put the same thing kind of you know right now we're, we're dealing with clover in a row but we're trying to attract pollinators you know if you put plants that are not attracting pollinators and they're attracting pests and you put a whole bunch of them together you're going to be attracting a whole lot more so i just wanted to show you real quick guys how we've got the the layout i wanted to create a hedge and this is our um a pineapple sage here and i made a, a couple spots along the front so i wanted them to have like fireworks coming up and then behind that have like the red clover and i mean it's just working out great so just just giving you an idea of what's going on here guys it's all working out really well um so regenerative planting turning grass into fertile soil for vegetables it is a process you can't just take grass and, and you know put vegetables in the grass and expect it to come out because it's a different um, microbial concentration you need more mycelium in your soil you need more fungal more more fungi the more fungi we have in our soil um, the more diversity we can grow where if, if we just keep it in terms of grass and the, the microbes that grass needs they don't need very much so we're not going to be able to grow in that soil unless we change the microbe concentration all right we need to change our soil food web to incorporate more of those organisms and right now with just grass it has less so we need that's that's the process guys that's the thought the mentality that we need to have is that we need to strengthen our soil by putting more microbes more of the soil food web more diversity diversity is nature's way okay so just to keep that in mind and show you guys this this uh clover system that i've got 
I mean, it works out really well, better than I expected. Um, I thought I'd show you my favorite part of the garden. I was just standing here just admiring how beautiful everything is. Um, we've got a lot of a lot of gladiolus. I mean, flowers are just popping everywhere right now. Um, the shiso down here is looking good. That's This is our first year growing that, so we're pretty excited. I mean, even the Brazilian spinach is coming up along the front. Um, hopefully we can get that going. But check out the flowers. I mean, they're so beautiful. These are um, bee balm. If you guys are familiar with bee balm, it's just a beautiful flower. Research has shown that uh, honeybees are specifically drawn to the color purple. Uh, everything in the spectrum from, from red or from a white through red up to purple is all about some honeybees. So if you want honeybees and you're not seeing them and you don't have purple, now you know why, guys. Let's put that together. It's pretty interesting. But the bumblebees are just all over this little fuzzy butt bees. They love the, um, the bee balm here. And they also like pretty much everything. I mean, bumblebees I've seen, I haven't seen something that they haven't gone to, to be honest. So um, even the nasturtiums down here, the bright red ones, I've seen a couple of bumblebees pop on those. Um, but not a lot of honeybees on the nasturtiums yet. Uh, we don't have a, an abundance of them. They're only coming up in two or three at a time. Um, but just, I mean, so many flowers, guys. So beautiful. And just to stand back here and see this at the end of the day every day is just magnificent. It's just a really good feeling to just be surrounded by beauty. You know, it's kind of like my, my King of the Hill stance. Um, if you see the, the hill here, it kind of overlooks this is a swale i made um you, there's a video showing how i did that but uh this this area just kind of looks out over the neighborhood and i just love standing here at the end of the day and standing in all the flowers and waving to people as they go by saying hey you know but um i also learned that one of the reasons we've been able to grow uh, brassicas for so many years uh, in our yard without having good soil is because they don't require mycorrhizal fungi so it's it, the um, the grass is specific to bacteria, uh, bacteria dominated soil. So it, you know if you're growing grass and you're trying to turn it into fertile soil, one of the best things you can plant right away is going to be um, the brassicas, like the kohlrabis and the, the kale, like kale here. This is three years old before we even knew about soil and how to bring soil back to health. So very exciting, guys, to just be able to share all this information as I'm learning it with you and to share the abundance and the beauty. Um, but yeah, this is Tom with Permaculture Wilmington. Live regeneratively and grow abundantly.